In this video presentation, we're going to be covering the drafting options for your line widths for your drafting stuff. So this is going to cover silkscreen assembly, courtyard, and component outlines. Select Tools, drop down, Options, and select Drafting. And the first panel that's opened was going to be the silkscreen outlines and text. For silkscreen is the only drafting option that has three tiers, most, nominal, and least. All the other outlines for assembly and courtyard and component have only one option. But silkscreen, you can actually have the most density level, for instance, with a more robust silkscreen line and silkscreen gap. And then for the nominal, a little bit less, and for the least, a little bit less, okay? But the minimum is 5 mils or 0.12 millimeters. The nominal is 6 mils or 0.15 millimeters. And the most is 8 mils or 0.2 millimeters. But you can change those values to whatever you want. We're going to be focusing on the nominal density level here for now. 0.15 is a, is a standard, but you could change it to any line width that you want. Map the outline. So we're going to push the silkscreen outline out to the maximum package dimensions. Okay, Or you the, you, the user, you could change it to minimum, nominal, or whatever value that you want. Now, for the reference designator, which is the next item down, the default is set to 1.2 height. And the 1.2 height is 50 mil, but you can change it to whatever value you want. Reference designator height. Now, a lot of CAD tools, they have their reference designator height already pre-programmed in their CAD tool, and whatever you set here is just ignored. When a footprint goes from footprint expert to your CAD tool, it's, the height is totally ignored because you have your preferences set in your CAD tool to whatever height you want. The next item down is your polarity dots. No larger than and no smaller than. No larger than, and I would say one millimeter, you wouldn't want a, a, a post-assembly inspection dot larger than a millimeter. And the least would be uh, 0.4. If you go less than 0.4, it becomes an invisible dot once you get your boards back. And these are post-assembly inspection dots for you to quality control the rotation of your package, whether the assembly shop inverted your part or not. Because if there's a polarity marker on the component package in the top, and then there's going to be a little dot by pin 1 on the board. And you want to match up your pin 1 dots with your component dot. Now, the default setting is 0.5 across the board. So that means that no matter what part you're going to be building here, you're going to get a half a millimeter dot. But again, you could have a range from, you know, anywhere from 0.4, which we recommend to be the minimum, to 0.7, Maximum, 0.8, whatever you want, okay? Down the list here, we got density levels. Now, this is for all density levels. We have the ref des width. That means the line width for the stroke font is going to be 10% of the height. So if you have a height of 1.2, the width is going to be 0.12, 10%. The next item down is going to be add outline to footprint. This is nothing more than... Then adding a silkscreen outline. Do you want the silkscreen outline in your footprints or not? Some people actually don't. Some people create their whole entire library with no silkscreen outlines, and they just uncheck this box. Reference designator to footprint. If you want a reference designator to footprint on your silkscreen layer, you would leave this button checked. It's default checked on by default, but you can uncheck it if you don't want any reference designators. The value is typically turned off, and it represents the value like of a resistor, like 100 ohms, or it could be the part number, or whatever you want it to be. It just adds a value. And then you change the value to whatever value that you want it to be. But it's turned off by default. If you want the value to be turned on, just check the box. It'll turn it on. It'll add the value to your footprint. The next item down is offset outline away from the surface mount body. Now, this specific thing here is where the line, the center line, is not the center of the line, but it's the edge of the line. In other words, it moves the silkscreen outline away from the body of the package, and it moves the origin of the line from the center to the edge. That's all that this does. If you want your outline 
origin to be in the center of the line, then you would uncheck this box. And then the silk screen outline will be the center of the line. The next item down is minimize silk screen ink. This is for like a ball grid array. This is an example. So if I have it unchecked, you're going to get a full silk screen body around the entire ball grid array package. If you check it, it's going to minimize your silk screen outline to just hatch any outline that is a closed polygon for your silk screen. Everything will be hatched from this point on. So an axial lead resistor, a ball grid array, any any silk screen outline that is enclosed as a polygon, you could go from a polygon to a hatch. The next item down is allow alternate outline when geometry is too small. An 0201 resistor capacitor, the pad spacing is too small for the silk screen outline. And by checking this box and turning it on, it's going to go ahead and put a silk screen outline around the pads instead of where it normally would put it between pad to pad. So normally your silk screen line is between pin one and pin two on your small packages. Then if your package gets too small where it can't fit a 0.15 millimeter line with a 0.15 millimeter gap, it's going to go ahead and draw a line around the pads. Okay, next item down is auto-generate pen one indicator. This is a line, so rather than, see, you either have this checked or this. So you either have a dot or a line. If you use both, a line and a dot, okay, it'll put the dot, it'll relocate the dot to the end of pen one, and it'll put a line along the edge of pen one. Then we go into the assembly outlines, and the assembly outlines are a closed polygon, and the outline, the default line width is 0.12, and, but you could change it to whatever value that you want. The mapped outline body is here, min, max, nominal. So we set the assembly outline to map to the maximum dimension of the package body. But the user, you can go ahead and change it to nominal or, or minimum. Then the reference designator for the assembly drawing it kind of like scales itself per the package size. So big packages will get a, the maximum, a two millimeter, but assembly height. So your reference designator for your assembly outline will be two millimeters for big packages. And as your package gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it's gonna go from two millimeters to 0.15 millimeter to one millimeter to 0.05 millimeter is your minimum, your least, okay? But you could go ahead and change these values to whatever you want. The, the unique thing about the assembly designator is it never leaves the center of the closed polygon. So you have a closed polygon for your assembly outline, and then you have a designator that stays inside that polygon forever and ever and ever, in your library and in your design and all the way out to your assembly drawing. And so I think if you get down into the 0201 chip capacitor, chip resistor outlines, the 0.1, the, the 0 0.5 is even kind of like large um, for those parts because you want to be able to put the entire reference designator for your package inside that closed polygon. Line width for your, of course, is 10% of your height. So if you have a 0.5 millimeter assembly reference designator height, it's going to be a 0.05 width, line width. One millimeter height will be 0.1 millimeter line width. Next item down is add the outline to footprint. If you don't want assembly outlines in your footprints, just uncheck this box. If you don't want reference designators for your assembly layer, uncheck this box. Polarity indicators for footprint. If you add, check this box on, it'll add a chamfer in any corner, wherever pin one is at. Now, it's checked on by default, but if you uncheck it, then it will remove that chamfer. And the chamfer, by the way, the FAQ would be, what size is it? Well, the chamfer for, this, for the assembly outline is one millimeter. Unless your part is too small, once your part starts violating, it's 25% of the width of the part. We go 25% for small packages all the way up until we hit one millimeter. And then one millimeter would be the maximum chamfer for all parts. 
The next section is courtyard outlines. The line width is set to 0.05, but the user can change it to whatever you want. Expand the courtyard to include silkscreen. Most people want the silkscreen to be inside the courtyard outline. The courtyard outline could be map to body, yes or no. The courtyard access to pads has three options, yes, no, and ignore. So therefore, right now you have a courtyard access. Okay, the courtyard access is for nominal density level is set to 0.2 millimeters. If you select no here, then it will not have an excess at all. It'll hug the courtyard to the package body. If you have courtyard access to pads is a separate dimension, you're going to have yes, no, or ignore. If you select ignore, it'll put the courtyard right through the pads and just hug to the body of the part. If you select no, it'll hug the courtyard to the edge of the pad. If you select yes, it'll apply the courtyard access to the pads. The contoured outline is next, and it's checked on by default, but if you uncheck it, you're going to get a rectangular courtyard, period. Contoured means it's going to contour around your pads and around your body, contour, or uncheck it and you'll get a square courtyard. Minimum contour cut-in gap is set to 0.5 millimeters, and you could set this value to whatever you want. And a good example of this would be like an SOT23, where pin 1 and pin 3 have a gap in between them. And you, it's legal to put a part, like an 0201 resistor, right in that space there, but you can't if your courtyard's going to go between pin 1 and pin 3 with no cut-in. So if you put a 0.5 millimeter cut-in gap here, that means your courtyard will cut in to pin 1 up to the edge of the part and cut down on, on the edge of pin 3. And it's, it's your, where your <clears throat> minimum contour is for your courtyard. Add outline to footprint. Some people don't want the courtyards in their footprints. Just uncheck the box if you don't. The last two are for the origin, for the origin marker, for the circle, and for the crosshair, whether you want them or not. So in some CAD tools, you can only have only one closed polygon on that layer. Therefore, you would have to turn off the target, turn the target off, because that's a circle which is a closed polygon, and the circle is a closed polygon, and your courtyard is a closed polygon, and some CAD tools can't handle two closed polygons on the same layer. These uh, origin markers and the courtyard outlines are on the same layer primarily because they never get put on a drawing or out to manufacturing. They're just there for drafting and for visual reference only. So this one checkbox is for your crosshair. This checkbox is for your circle. Turn them both on or both off or one on, one off. The next option is for your component outline and terminal outlines. The outline width for your component body outline is 0.025 or 1 mil. And then you could say include in the CAD output and you assign the mechanical layer that that outline goes on. Now this is an outline, so it's always in the nominal density level. So in other words... Over your silkscreen outline, you can map your silkscreen to the maximum density level. Okay, in the assembly outline, you can map it to the maximum density level, minimum, nominal, or maximum. But your component outline is always mapped to the nominal body of the component outline. And you have the choice of changing the line width of the outline and changing whether you want to put it in your CAD tool on a mechanical layer or not. Same thing with the terminals. These are terminals. This is where the metal of the terminal lead falls on the pad. And this gives you an indicator of whether you have a good solder joint goal or not. Because if the pad falls off this terminal outline, you're going to have a bad solder joint goal. So you always want your terminal outlines to be on a pad completely 100%. That means that if you're typing in the manufacturer's dimensions and all of a sudden your terminals uh, fall off your pad... I would back out of those dimensions and then use the IPC dimensions rather than the manufacturer's recommended dimensions. That's if all your dimensions are all lined up correctly. In other words, you inputted all the correct dimensions into the calculator because if you input a wrong dimension, you might get false results. But anyway, you have an option here to 
to take those terminal outlines and put them on a mechanical layer. Now, the beauty of this is, is that you could take that mechanical layer and then you could place all your parts on your design and then turn that mechanical layer on and you could see where every single terminal lead, the metallization of the terminal, falls on every pad. It's for quality control purposes. So, but by adding it to your footprint, it'll add a little bit more data to your footprint, which would make your database larger. So everything that you add, if you add your silkscreen outline, your assembly outline, your courtyard outline, your component terminal outlines, whatever, every outline that you add to your footprint, every feature that you add, your size of your library is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But with today's speed, on CPU processing and the storage space or whatever, it's not applicable today. And that concludes the drafting options for silkscreen, assembly, courtyard, and component and terminal outlines. Simplify, standardize, and automate an entire IPC and IEC compliant library. Detailed, accurate, reliable, professional. Highest quality footprints and 3D step models clicks away. Many companies worldwide are easily generating their CAD libraries. You should too. Get a fully functional footprint expert evaluation license for any CAD format and demo today. Contact us at pcblibraries.com or call 847-557-2300.